I got a Heath Kid Hero 1 robot. Yeah, but it's Snow Hero 2000. Ooh. Hey, man, is that the new iPhone in your hand? No, silly. It's the Hero 1 programming unit. All right. Well, Hero 1 has been rescued. Uh, all of his systems are working, and uh, I'm starting to learn how to program them, and I figure I will just make a little video documentary as we go and just kind of go through these things step by step. So if you find one of these, you'll be able to use it and pick up where maybe I left off. And we're taking the time machine back to the 80s oh, with the Hero One programming unit or training pendant, I heard it called before. Um, this here is what you use to train him to move around. Uh, you train him to a, you know, to a program. Uh, and you could also use this as a remote control. And uh, how this works is you have a trigger and this initiates the function. So you move this, this selector switch. So this would be the body. And right now it's in neutral. And so when this pendant is in neutral, um, it will move the front wheel left and right. And once you've selected where the front wheel is going to point, you can go the speed of, you know, I hit reverse first, speed one, two, and three, three being the fastest, and then forward, speed one, two, and three. Um, and the other function is you make the selector switch, switch over to the arm. And once over to the arm, it now goes to the secondary functions, which is the head, the arm extend, little pivot, uh, and on the other, this has no function there at the end. Uh, and then you have the wrist pivot, the rotate, and the grip. And we'll go through and show you what each one of those do. Um, and pivot left and right, extend forward, backward. So very straightforward, sort of. <laughs> get to figure out what all those things mean uh, that's my short 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 version so we'll plug them into the robot and show you how this works please stand by all right now uh, let's plug it in and if I got to show you where this thing plugs in then um, you need to do more study <laughs> so go ahead and plug this plugger in line them back up his power switch is on the back. Ready. And uh, the first thing you want to do in powering up Hero, no matter what, because you don't know what state it's been left in, is uh, to do a homing feature. Uh, Ready. The homing feature that takes it to all its limits, and that's 31. And you'll hear a bit of rattling. And what that is is pulling the arm all the way, all the way in to re-zero it. I'll turn that around so you can see it better. And it's going to pull that for a little while. Once that's done, you can see the wrist is now clicking away. I believe I have this already set at its, at its limits. Uh, oh, there we go. It's doing something else. Uh, cat's coming in to investigate. <laughs> I should program this thing to chase after the cat. That would be adventurous. <laughs> Tune in next week when I chase after the cat. Uh, and the head's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna turn left and right, and it's just finding its, um, its zero point. And do this all the time. And when you first start this up, do it. Cause you're, you know, you're gonna forget if you left it in some weird mode or in a, in a weird position. And then you go to program it and everything's gonna be screwed up cause it wasn't zeroed. Um, a quick tip, and I'll show that to you in a sec. Once it's done homing, uh, once it's done, it, once it's done with the head, and it's figured out. Okay, hit zero. I know where I need to end up. You hear a little noise now. That's the front ready. wheel uh, going to its zero point, and it'll say ready when it's done. Ready? So once it's done homing. 
then you're all, all set to roll. Um, if you have, you've had the power on for a while and you've gone to programming um, and you want to go into like a soft home where it doesn't go through that whole process, uh, it'll return to the last known zero, shall we say, and that command is uh, 32. Ready. And what that, what that did, well, nothing was moved, is it just returned everything to zero without hitting limits. And um, it's a quick way to, if you have the power on while you're programming and say, ah, shoot, I forgot I got a wheel turned and I shouldn't, that'll return it to zero and a quick sanity check. So I'll go ahead and pick up the pendant. Um, this series is about programming him, but we'll just go through um, some basic functions of the pendant or the programming unit. Um, to activate this programming unit, if you notice it, it's not doing anything right now. Uh, you gotta hit the number four. So, you know, Ready. I hit reset just you know because you didn't have to, but so four. Um, so now that I have him in four. Uh, I can go ahead and move move him around. And let's say, I got him in the shot. So let's go forward slow. We'll switch it to body. And what you do is you push the trigger to engage that. You can see he's moving forward. Uh, he's got... And as you move him, this counter will count. That's counting the steps. So he's just moved 50. Um, and I'll back them up so I can get them in the shot a little better. So I'm going to go reverse. And this is speed one. And uh, you can go faster. Let's back them up a little bit. I mean, he doesn't move fast like ludicrous speed and heading off the plaid. But <laughs> he does. Uh, this is medium. Holy crap. That's fast. Let's send him backwards in medium. Look at him fly. It's amazing. And then um, the maximum speed, which is three, which is ludicrous speed. I mean, that was just so not much noticeably faster. <laughs> Let's go. Let's back him up. I can kind of see he's not really going that straight. I'll have to look at that and adjust where his front wheel set. Um, not exactly straight, but we'll look at that later. Uh, but anyways, uh, so now you want to turn him. Uh, so what you do is you go in the neutral, and um, you got the left and the right wheel. And I don't know if you can hear it, but go right, and then pull the trigger. You can see it move a little bit. Now you're all the way to the right. So, what you do is you keep your thumb down on the right, let go of the trigger, and his wheel is still fully in right. Now, I'll tell you why that's important later when you get to programming, but when you program him, you always want to do that. You want to go full right or full left, and then do the function. Um, you don't want to do the function as you're turning, like a radio control car. Like, say you're going and you start turning the wheel while you're still moving, your programmer will get all jacked up. Um, but you want to always do with him. Now, if you're in remote control, yeah, you can steer him like a radio control car. But when you're programming him, it's one step at a time. So you want to turn your wheel and keep it all the way turned and then move. And um, that way he'll stay on track because when the program's running, and if you're moving forward, that speed of turn is not always going to be the same on the wheel and you're not going to get from point A to point B successfully. So that's important to know. Um, so you want to keep your thumb down on that. And let's say we're going to go forward and you hit him. And then you see how we can turn left to right, depending on where that wheel's sitting. Now, and also, let's go back to neutral. Let go of the button. You let go of the button and then hit the trigger. The wheel's now returned. Uh, so just, you know, remember, remember that. Let's say, let's go, let's move the wheel left. And see, I'm pulling, holding the trigger. Now, 
if you forget the to hold that down when you go to move as soon as you hit go that wheel is going to start returning to center so you don't want that to really happen it messes things up on when you get to the programming so remember to hold that all the way down and then you can do as you keep moving that way move that way then you can let go of the trigger go to neutral hold the trigger it's now returning to zero uh, and a good example of what I was talking about is you can run them like a radio control car. You know, you can start moving them left, start moving them right, just like you would a radio control car. But when, if you do this when you're programming, it'll, it'll mess things up. So you always just do one step at a time. Um, so let me back him up a little bit. Do, 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 do. All right, let's move his head just so you can see a little better. Oh, <laughs> I tripped on the cat. All right, here, uh, let's see, arm, head. That's not doing, oh, I gotta put him back in the four. Ready? Four. See? There goes his head. And if you forget where zero is, um, you reset. Ready? 32 and he's going to go back to zero without going through that that entire function Ready. And it's now back to zero um, so now we have him kind of facing this way we'll just go through and show some of his arm functions um, so uh, this is his head left and right and remember hold the trigger down to activate it so you're going to go left trigger oh I got to put him in four <laughs> Four. Now he's listening. <laughs> so you can go left, right, and uh, then we got his arm. That's extend. It's going to make it longer. I don't want to hit the floor. So let me go um, to pivot. This is arm pivot. And um, he rose slow. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> this arm is um, less than to be desired as far as the speed comes. But this is max speed. This is all she's got. Mom! And I'm not going to raise it all the way. Um, so then you have the extend. So, you know, I'm just hitting this trigger to do the function. And it, it's responsive. We're just goofing around. And you're not programming anything we're not programming anything yet i'm just showing you how this stuff works so you can extend the arm um i don't know how far you want to take it this is the part where you fast forward uh neutral doesn't do anything when you're in the arm function um pivot you can see it's pivoting at wrist over there um ooh, i had a little hiccup up there this thing's old, it's a little rickety. Um, I probably have to do a little bit of work on that. So you can move that wrist around and then you got rotate. I think she's gibbered up. Hello. Yeah, just got gibbered. This thing's old as can be. And then you have the grip. And use your ear. Uh, if you're doing arm functions, um, you got to really pay attention because you can over grip. And you'll hear like this telltale sound. Like say you're picking up a cup. Hear that click click? You just, you basically lost your zero. See how now it's not closing all the way? Um, so you really have to pay attention. If it, if it tries to overdrive, the motor will slip because it's some protection here to um, to keep things from breaking and once it's slipped you've now lost zero so just a, a, a quick way to regain zero is to run it out max one direction and you hear when it stops now you're you're kind of back at the zero point that's kind of at least for the arm function I found that the gripper function I found that work and the other alternative is to hit the 32 it well that won't actually reset that because it's hit a limit 
Uh, but that's a quick way to figure out the, the clamper limit. I do that a lot. And um, so this was how to use this to move it around to get you ready for the next step, um, which is actually programming this. And I'll hit uh, 32 on this, and you'll see how it's, it, everything just kind of goes back to remembered zero. Um, so reset. Ready. 32. And it's just going to go. It's not homing itself. It's just going back to known as zero. And this could take three days. <laughs> Uh, some filler to talk about while well, it's moving through these functions on the display I don't I don't have that I have a video of that but whenever you move the functions around on the display it tells you the count um, so if you want to write that down in some programming sheet that you're doing um, so and, and save that data somewhere you can do that you want to close the clamper. Ta-da! Brilliant! And um, I'm going to just turn this around and then we'll, I guess the next step on is how to do some programming. Yay! Yeah, but you better hurry up. I'm getting tired of waiting. <laughs>